somehow my guys, I came crawling back to this game. But honestly, when you see something like this, you'd be like, ha ha ha, I shouldn't have left in the first place. Hi, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. It has been a while, but my name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about why I am suddenly addicted to this game again. And on top of that, I want to talk about all of the different mistakes that I've been making throughout this entire like launch. It's been about what, like maybe two or three or four weeks since Blue Archive has gone live. And to be honest, up until like last week, I've been making like some really bad moves, really bad choices, stuff like that. And so I do want to talk about, hey, can I head pad her? There's no head padding in this game. What the frick? Anyway, yeah I just wanted to talk about all of the different mistakes and I don't know if they are learning mistakes because like some of them are kind of like you're kind of an idiot and so to an extent you guys can kind of just laugh at me oh oh wait did she blink her eyes when oh oh Oh, look at that that's oh man that live 2d is advanced anyway you guys can just laugh at me or even like tell me what i should be doing because yeah truth be told something about revive which caught me but like now i am like i'm crazy about blue archive and so whilst my last video did say that i was going like super casual on blue archive and stuff i am still quite casual but i'm trying to do everything right this time all right and so with that being said i do want to talk about the one thing that i did do right which is not a mistake and that is at the very least i always logged on and and every single day I would always be dumping my stamina. Unfortunately, I didn't always get to do it, but like I had a whole bunch of hard modes unlocked at the time and I did dump stamina into a lot of the hard modes as well as some of the normal modes. So uh, I just think that levels are so important and the only way you get levels is from the stamina. And so my guys, that is the one thing that I did do right. All right, now let's get to the mistakes because um, some of these are actually quite brutal. So my guys, here is my box. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of different people invested. And so what I do want to talk about here is EO Yori, Hibiki, and Haruna. That was kind of like my target reroll and what I did settle with. However, what you will notice is that I do not have Shun unlocked. And so I kind of want to call this a mistake. I, I do believe that Iori, Hibiki, and Shun, that would have been a stronger start than with Haruna. However, this may be the anger talking, like the mold. So if I come over here, I'll show you guys what exactly I'm molding over. And it's just this bad boy over here. It's the PVP. I don't know about you guys, but like every time I see a Shun, I die. Even when I look at an opponent like this one, and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, there's three empty slots. Uh, one of them could be Shun, but Shun's not up the front. And then I click in and then I go battle them and then surprise there's a freaking Shun. So for example if I go to my battle history you'll see bam there's a Shun there. There was an Aru at the top and then there was a Shun hidden in the back. And then yeah like <laughs> my match history look at this I lost like five in a row. <laughs> It was actually 15 hours ago when I was like, man, screw this. I can't, I can't PVP. Even if it's not Shun, I'm just freaking trash. That's the reality of it. But yeah, the other thing about Haruna is like, I feel like Haruna hasn't been overly useful in terms of the rest of the content. And so yeah, I kind of just wish I had Shun. That's all. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about mistake number two. So that was like really heavily investing into characters that I wasn't, well, I wasn't supposed to be investing into. So I'm talking like ignoring tier lists and stuff stuff like that and because like I know I said I was casual and then suddenly I'm not but it's not only that I was just kind of like scrambling together teams like Sumire for example like I don't know if you guys know this chick but essentially she fires around a shotgun and rolls around the battlefield and hits nobody there is absolutely no question as to why she is like at the bottom of tier lists anyway so yeah I juiced up Sumire I have freaking three star fever I freaking look at that I'm like three stars must be good better juice her up I was so freaking wrong and then so I did that for a couple other characters uh who was it? it was the fear girl the kayoko unfortunately kayoko wasn't that strong hasumi wasn't that strong but the others are kind of generally okay and i know that my box like to you guys who are more meta followers it kind of looks good but just remember a few days ago before i started going crazy about blue archive i did not have the nonomi raised up i did not have the serika raised up i did not have the akari i did not have the fuka i did not have a lot of these great characters like these great two-star characters leveled up and so that's kind of my mistake my regret I wish I just like paid a little bit more attention to like the team building the team comp aspect because that's pretty much the entire game all right and so my third mistake so you guys see Nonomi over here you guys will recognize Nonomi from the unlock of the uh, the completion of all those beginner missions so if I come back over here and so it's gone now but there used to be a button over here which is like oh we have like these missions across seven days if you complete all of them then we'll give you Nonomi and so me being the dumbass I was I held those Nonomi shards for a very very long
long time. So she was down here and she, it was like, oh, you can activate Nonomi now. And I freaking held onto this mother effing S tier unit for a long, long time because I thought that you'd be able to recruit her. However, I was so freaking wrong. So if I click into the rate info and you guys will see Nonomi does not actually show up here. She is actually exclusive to that beginner event thing. And so what that means is that my dumbass was holding onto effectively an S tier unit for, for freaking no reason. And if you guys have been watching for a while, like if you guys have been watching pre-con, you guys will know that I am the type of guy who likes to pull like a three star and then instantly five star them with the shards. That plan was never gonna work because I could never have pulled her. And so this is one of those times where you just kind of say, Dumb. And this is most certainly one of those times that I do say, yeah, frick, <laughs> you're right. All right, moving on. So you guys saw my box just before, and that was like, it had quite a fair few students invested into. However, what you will notice is that I am level 37. So I do have a couple of students at level 37, but like the majority of them are actually like trailing, trailing behind. And so the mistake here is that I did not prioritize the EXP stage or like rather investing into characters that would help me clear the EXP stage. So in the battle, in the commissions, you guys will know this one, base defense, in which there are a whole bunch of these robots coming down from like the top right hand side and then you're coming up from the bottom left and you're trying to push them back and kill them and so if I open this up you'll see the enemies are actually weak against the yellow archetype and so because they're actually coming down in swarms you're very much going to need the AOE yellow attackers and so the two key characters for this game mode are actually Nonomi which I did not unlock until very very recently this badass lady over here because she does a massive massive cone shaped yellow attack and on top of that we're looking at Junko. So obviously, if you guys did watch my last video, you will know that I remembered about Junko. Junko is a fantastic AOE yellow attacker to help me clear the yellow content. And so on her EX skill level one, she is able to still at this point in the game, one hit all of those little robot dudes. However, the real star of the show is Nonomi. Nonomi just has a massive, massive cone. The AOE is insane. And so what I mean by like not investing enough into her is I did not get enough of these things over here to be able to get her EX skill up. And so as you can see, 497% attack up to 627. I think that most people are actually going to be blocked by not having this EX skill unlocked or evolved. Because I can tell you that I am almost able to one hit everything with this skill. I ju just barely can't. And so yeah, I'm not sure if I have actually dumped these discs into another character, but they need to all go to Nonomi. And so after my Nonomi becomes strong as well as my Junko, I can actually farm the EXP stage a higher one so I can get better rates on the value for the stamina. And then I can finally catch up the rest of my characters that need to go to a high level. So as you can see, my Hanae, my freaking Kotama, Chise, my Asuna down here, Kotori, like they all need to be leveled and I really, really need them up ASAP, especially in preparation for the upcoming blue raid. All right, so that is mistake number four. Mistake number five is this bad boy up here. So we got the stamina, click, click plus, hello. And as you can see, we can do the refreshes. It costs 30 of the gemmies to refresh so for context that's one quarter of a roll one quarter of a roll for 120 ap especially at the early levels this was so incredibly worth it because guys as always you could look at this in two ways you could be getting an extra roll every four days or you could be getting that extra bit of progress the argument is always you need to spend money to make money right and so in this case refreshing means getting stronger for pvp so maybe you don't have to mold as hard as me but on top of that it allows you to push story so it might enable you to be able to farm some of the nodes earlier. So these days I refresh about like one to three times, just depends on how I'm feeling in terms of if I want to save for pulls for more waifus. But yeah, I completely gimped my early game progression. I should have refreshed back then. All right, mistake number six, and we are back in the box. And so you guys will see my Tsubaki over here. She is looking real cute. However, I did not always have Tsubaki, especially at the end of the reroll. And so this is probably one of my biggest mistakes, one of my biggest regrets, because I didn't have Tsubaki and I was getting screwed up in all types of content and I ended up sinking 100 rolls into the previous banner for her. In those 100 rolls, I did end up getting Shiroko as well, but... <laughs> 
imagine, imagine spending a hundred rolls to get a two star unit. And so if you guys are watching this and you aren't actually in blue archive yet, then I would highly, highly suggest that if you do go for any account, if you do go for a reroll, it's got to have Tsubaki in it. If not Tsubaki, then at least another tank like Hoshino or something like that. But I didn't have any of them. I only had my Yuka. And so I freaking rolled a hundred times for this two star. All right. So mistake number seven is actually crafting. So I was actually ignoring crafting for a very, very long time. And unfortunately, I can't show you like what I'm crafting right now, but essentially I'm crafting two things, furniture and student gifts. And the more important one between the two are actually the furniture pieces. So if I come over here, come over to the cafe. And so guys, welcome to my home. It is a humble abode. It is, it is an abomination. <laughs> But you know what? I got freaking space invaders going on over here. Like it don't even matter, right? Anyway, so furnitures. Furniture, the main purpose of furniture is actually to juice up your comfort. So as you can see, I have capped out on comfort right now. However, for a very, very long time, this space was empty and my comfort was like, like 500 or whatever the default was. And so my guys, comfort is actually extremely important because, uh, well, I can't see anything there, but this one, cafe earnings, the more comfort you have, the more earnings for both energy as well as the currency you can get. So this bad boy is at 9.29. I'm pretty sure when I started paying attention, it was at like three or something. And so obviously more stamina means more EXP. And so hopefully over time, you'll get stronger and stronger with more of this comfort that is providing you with more of this. And so if you guys have not maxed out your comfort, go on and do the crafting. Make sure that your, uh, your cafe kind of looks like this. And so yeah, that's it for the cafe really. In terms of like why gifts, I think the only way to get gifts is actually from crafting at this point in the game. Otherwise, if you're done with your furniture, if you're done with your gifts or you don't care about them, then you can probably look to craft the EX skill upgrade materials. But other than the benefits of the comfy, like look, it's it just feels a lot more alive. It's just pretty, oh, look, I got an arcade machine. All right, and so let's move on to mistake number eight. So there is actually a shop here, haha, <laughs> surprise. I didn't notice it for a couple of days. Anyway, we've got a bunch of these rocks over here as well as these materials down here. I should have been buying all of these at least and some of these at some point in the game every single day because these guys they get refreshed every day so if I hit purchase selected you'll be able to see down here refreshes in 15 hours right in the early game I was actually struggling really really hard in terms of like these guys I did not have enough of these lesser enhancement stones and so more often than not most of my gear was just sitting at level one and so that could have been very very easily solved had I you know looked around in the shop and realized that they were selling these for freaking credits right anyway aside from that mistake number nine is this one which is Ligma. <laughs> so Ligma, I don't know if they're very culturally aware or whatever, but like essentially what we should have done at the very, very start of the game is essentially buy two, no, I can't remember how many, but buy enough LFs for Tsubaki to go from two star to three star because three star is where her real tanking capabilities come out. And also on top of that, uh, Serena, Serena, I don't see Serena. Yep. She's over here. So Serena, Serena, you want her to go from one star to two star, which will unlock her third skill. That third skill will boost her healing by, I think, 14% or 24. I'm pretty sure it's 14%. But yeah, that is pretty much the first thing that we should have done. Serena, I believe, is not farmable like, in any way. And so a small investment of a million dollars or 20 LF approximately will get her to two stars. And so the reason that I'm targeting these two is because they would have made early game so much easier. Honestly, they make like even end game a lot easier. And I did mention that that Serena was not farmable. I believe Tsubaki should be very farmable very, very soon. In the upcoming event, I do believe that we will be getting a lot of Tsubaki LFs. And so hold out for that if you are at this stage, if you are still at the two star, because we probably can juice her up quite a fair bit thanks to the event. All right, and so with that being said, let's go to tip number 10, which is not trying hard enough in Sushi Man. Like, oh my God, I hate Sushi Man so much. <laughs> so Sushi Man is just this one over here, Overpass Desert Railroad and Classroom. And essentially you are fighting red characters. So if I click into the enemies over here, you can see that they are all light armor or rather we will need red teams to beat these. And so for a very long time, I was just doing like overpass C or like overpass B or something. And then I was just skipping that 
every day. And there were several reasons for that. The main reason was that I was just underleveled and I just couldn't do it. Because for this one, you do need to take advantage of the academy buffs. You do need to be juicing out so many characters. Like if you can imagine it, you need three teams, right? Because like one for each of these, and then you need four characters per team, if not up to six, including supports. So potentially three teams and four characters, that's like 12 characters that you need. And if you are using the supports as well, that could go up to 18. But of course, a lot of characters can be carried over, but that would kind of be like the optimal team, right? So like I said, I just did not have enough EXP to go around because I could not farm the EXP stage efficiently. And unfortunately, I could not farm the EXP stage efficiently because I did not juice up my Nonami, or rather for a large part of the game, I did not have her. So again, I think it's just all coming back down to I was a bit of a Baka. All right, and so that brings me to the last mistake. And I don't know if this is actually true. I'm pretty sure it's true, but like this is probably the mistake that makes me feel the dumbest. And so let's go to Overpass. And so this one over here, let's have a look at this. And so as you can see, Overpass E drops the training materials for the EX skills. And so if I go up to Overpass D, you will see that we are getting the silvery blue platinum looking ones. And so my mistake, my dumbass was like, well, Overpass D drops these ones and Overpass E drops these ones. However, all of my characters actually needed the white ones, like these ones. So, oh my God, let's farm Overpass B. Yeah. I, I I don't know, man. I, that's how Revive Witch worked, okay? That's uh, freaking hell. Anyway, the reality is, is that Overpass E, although it says that it only drops these guys over here, they do, in fact, drop the lower tier ones. So, oh my God, that's it's so dumb. But it's okay. I, I know now. I know now. So, and hopefully you guys know now too. All right, and so that's kind of it for all of the mistakes that I've been making throughout these last few weeks. I hope you guys did learn something, but if not, then just like call me a dum dum in the comments. But otherwise, I think it's time for you guys to give me some tips. Is there something that I should be doing that I like clearly am not? Or should I be prioritizing some of the different characters that like I clearly have not invested into, such as uh, like the Asana? The, most of them I do know about, but maybe there are some hidden sleepers that I just did not get to. And so my guys, give me the tips but otherwise i hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you would end up leaving a comment then i would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video but otherwise please consider a like on the video and a subscribe but as harana once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye